Hey YouTubers, welcome back to At Our Modern Farmhouse with Cat and Pat. Uh, today, I um, just want to kind of go through a couple things. So, our last video we posted, we uh, the sheetrock is in. Um, they were here two days ago, sprayed the ceiling, as you guys can see. So the ceiling's done. They came back yesterday, did a full sand, um, and then they were back today cleaning. Um, so we're ready to go on sheetrock. I might say it is very dusty in the house. So I think we're gonna be cleaning up dust for the next month at least. Um, it's everywhere, it's all over our clothes, it's all over upstairs. Uh, it looked like it was raining dust as they were uh, sanding yesterday in the house. So um, it's dusty, guys. Um, so a lot of cleaning. I was down here in the basement today cleaning, uh, tonight actually, and um, I started messing with some wood. So as Kathy kind of pointed out in our last video that uh, we were kind of, contemplating on what we were gonna do on our walls, so our feature walls, so our barnwood walls, our beams, um, our little nook area over here where we have a window seating area with some wood, our bar area. So I'm just gonna paint over here real quick, guys. So this is kind of all about a DIY barnwood wall. So we've used barnwood shiplap. We've used other things in the past. So upstairs we have barnwood shiplap. Our ceilings are um, all of this uh, pine, uh, tongue and groove. We're constantly using this down here on our ceilings. Um, I kind of wanted to do something myself that wasn't really made for that, I guess you could say. So I was at Home Depot looking for pickets, some cool pickets, and I came across these Western Red Cedar pickets, $1.43. So if you've been to Home Depot, been to Lowe's, and you've seen their uh, pre-made barnwood shiplap pieces, you know, they're $9 for an eight foot stick. These four foot flat top by five and a half inch wide are $1.43. Um, the thing I like about them is they're super rustic. So they're like number three though. So they're not really, I mean, you could use them for a fence, but you're gonna have a lot of these knots and wormholes and things. We like those. That's specifically why I picked these. So this is kind of, I kind of laid out a pattern of what we're gonna do. Um, we haven't decided if we're gonna stain them or not. I think we're gonna leave them the color they are for now. Uh, we have a lot of dark wood upstairs. So uh, it's ebony and it's a, a poplar wood type uh, common board that they rustic, uh, get that rustic feel to and then stain them in an ebony stain. So they're really cool. But down here we wanna go a little lighter uh, with, our, with our paint palette and, and colors in wood. So, um, but if we go with this red cedar, and we keep it this natural color. I'm building an eight foot uh, long console to go under this 86 inch TV that we're gonna put on the wall. So what I was thinking about doing is I don't want it to match because I want to do it out of cedar as well. So I was thinking, well, we can stain it. And I've seen some videos on YouTube um, with guys fire burning wood to pull out the grain. So I had a couple pieces of just trash cedar that I had out in the garage. So I got my little torch out and I started messing around with them. And this is how they came out. And I thought, man, that's pretty cool. Um, so for a very inexpensive, not stained, just fire burned, how it pulls out all the grains and the different, different grains in them, the knots. So what I did is I, then I came down here and I pulled one of these cedar pieces. And basically I did the same thing here. So. I'm going to show you guys how to do this um, because when you're talking $1.43 for one of these, I can do five of these pieces for one piece of the barn wood that you can buy at Home Depot or Lowe's. So you can cover a lot more square footage on your wall, a lot more space doing something like this and doing it yourself. You know, if you've got a torch or you can rent a torch or, I mean, I'm just using, uh, we'll come over here real fast, guys. So what I'm using is, I'm just using these one, one pound uh, propane bottles for my portable uh, grill that I barbecue with. And I had, happen to have this Linux uh, torch. So it's a, self, it's a striking torch, so it starts right here. I don't need a light or anything. So this is what I use to, to burn those. So if I do a much bigger area, I would probably go buy a torch from Home Depot or Lowe's or one, one of the stores that hooks to your 30 pound bottle. So you can do a lot more uh, pieces at a time and get a lot more done quicker. Cause this, this does take a long time. If I was to do this whole wall, I definitely would not use this bottle with this torch. But for purposes for showing you guys how it's done, that's what I'm gonna use. So I've got a piece here. 
like I said, it's a dollar forty-three for this piece of wood. Um, you can put these tight together, like I've done on the wall. You can nickel gap them and make them look like shiplap. You can pretty much do whatever you wanted to do with this, and I think that's what we're going to end up doing is is what we got on the wall right now. But I'm going to show you how to do it using this torch, um, and uh, let's go ahead and fire it up. So this this torch is really easy, guys. It's pretty cool. You might look for one of these. You just Basically, unscrew this, it opens the gas, it's got a strike in there. So you want to make long passes. You don't want to keep the heat on it too much in one spot because it will darken in that area. I've tried a bunch of times, you know, some of these, but basically, you're just going to get it hot. You already see it start pulling out the drain. a little bit and make them make them darker if you want to anywhere you want that grain to pop you just hit it with a little more heat this piece of wood's got a lot of grain a lot of different movement in it That's what it looks like. I'm not going to go too far up here. I'm holding it with my hand, so we're going to just stop there. But so when I brought these two pieces up, these little pieces of uh, three inch, I brought those up the other night. Kathy thought I actually stained those, and when I told her that they were fire burned, she was like, "Wow, that's pretty cool. Um, we definitely should do the console that you're going to build in that." Um, so you know, it's not hot or anything, but. Pretty inexpensive way to do your uh, DIY barnwood wall. Uh, like I said, you could, you know, put a, put a nickel in there and you could shiplap these. Um, I don't think that's the way I'm going to go. And to be honest, uh, we were going to use those barnwood shiplap pieces from Home Depot and Lowe's. I bought one. I had it down here, guys, and I let it sit for about a month. And when I went to hang it on the wall, it had warped so bad it was basically ruined. So that piece. If I was going to use those, I would have to hang them as soon as I uh, as soon as I got them down here. Um, otherwise, they're just going to warp. But just to recap, so this is just for the console. It's right. not for the wall. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. So, so on the wall, we're going to use these wider or these non yeah. Yeah. fire. Yeah. So we're just going to leave them this western red cedar. Like I said, these are four foot flat top pickets. Um, Western Red Cedar, number two, number three. They're not in the best condition, but I love them. Uh, I actually found these at Home Depot as I was leaving the wood department after I checked out. They had a skid of them sitting there, and I just started going through all of them, picking out the ones that actually were the worst, guys, because we like the knots. Now, when we do hang these, as you can see, I've got my OSB up here. In our last video, I kind of talked about why I put OSB on here. If I didn't have OSB on here, I would have to hit every stud to make sure that it that it was uh, you know attached. With putting an OSB on, I can face nail anywhere that I want to, and I don't have to worry about hitting a stud. So that makes it nice. Did it cost more? Yeah. Um, 
when we started building the basement, these four by eight sheet pieces of seven sixteenths OSB were under $10. Uh, the last time I bought a piece, it was right at 30. So they've, uh, you know, really, uh, wood is very expensive right now, along with a lot of other building materials. So that's what we're gonna do. But since we do have these big knots, I'm gonna either put um, a roofing paper behind, so it would be black, or we might just go through and paint this wall with just a brown paint so you don't see the OSB behind. So that would be one way to take care of that so you don't see that back behind. Um, let's look at um, the wall over here real fast. Yeah, so come over here real fast, guys. So I'm laying out our um, half wall that we're going to do, our wainscot wall, and our hickory flooring. So I started the process to lay this out. So um, we have a lot of leftover hickory flooring. They range from seven, five, fours, and three. So it's alternating throughout the house. We kept all of our remnants. So this wall will all be hickory. Um, I'm going to do a cap that will run across. It'll hit just underneath this window well and the seal right here and uh, cover this entire wall. And we're going to leave it natural. We're not going to stay. So um, that's, that's kind of it on that. Um, So anyways, guys, um, thanks for joining us tonight. Um, don't forget to like, comment. For you new, new viewers, please subscribe, and we'll see you next time. Thanks.